Ten, welcome to this uh, seminar uh, about uh, unemployment insurance. My name is Robert Andersson and I'm the head of the negotiations team at SULF. And uh, before we start, just some information. This seminar will be recorded on Facebook. Um, you are welcome to ask questions after the seminar and you can write uh, your questions in the chat or uh, in uh, at Facebook uh, also uh, works well uh, and we will be able to answer general questions about the unemployment insurance today if you have individual questions you are welcome to contact us or Academica Nasakasa after the seminar uh, so uh, Today we will uh, learn a lot about the unemployment insurance and it's uh, Petter Broman from Akademiker Nasakassa that will tell you all you need to know about the insurance and we are very happy to have you with us today, Petter, and you can introduce yourself uh, later. Uh, just a few words about SULF, the Swedish Association of University Teachers and Researchers. Uh, we are a professional association for teachers, researchers and doctor candidates at universities in Sweden. Uh, we are not connected to any political parties and we have today over 21,000 members. Uh, and as a member you can get all type of advice and support on matters related to your employment or your studies as doctor candidate. Um, and including then pay benefits and also social security issues. And in the membership, we also have an income insurance policy. Uh, and the income insurance uh, will be the topic for the next seminar. So we will not say very much about it today. Uh, but just briefly, the income insurance is included in the membership uh, to, to SULF. Uh, you can use the uh, income insurance if you have been employed as doctor candidate. Uh, it's important to know that in order to use the income insurance, you must also be a member of Academic and Asa Kassa, uh, and you should be a member in both organizations for at least one year before you become unemployed. And the income insurance pays together with the compensation from Academic and Asa Kassa up to 80% of your salary up to 80,000 per month. And if you are eager to find out more about the income insurance, you can uh, read more at our webpage. Uh, and um, if you are not alre already a member in SULF, you're welcome to join already today and uh, through the web uh, page. And the membership fee ranges between 75 and 260 crowns per month, um, depending on your what type of employment you have or if you do not have an employment. Uh, as a doctorate candidate with employment, the fee is only 125 crowns per month. So uh, with that, I hand over to Petter. So. Thank you. Uh, my name is Petter Broman. Uh, I have worked at Akademikerna Sakassa since uh, 2007, uh, first as a case officer. Uh, now I work half time with reviews of cases, uh, as well as half time with communication and uh, yeah, communication, which is why I am here speaking to you. Uh, I will try to give you a brief review of the unemployment insurance and what it means to be a member of an ACASA. And I will also uh, uh, tell you why it's important to have been a member of both an ACASA as well as a trade union. And in your case, SULF will of course be the best choice. Let's see, do you see my slide now? Yes. Y yes. Good, thank you. So I come from Akademikernas A-Kassa. Uh, we are the A-Kassa, the unemployment benefit insurance for people with an academic education, which means that each and every one of you should qualify um, to join us. What is an A-Kassa? 
the ACASA uh, are an organization that are paying out unemployment benefits to their members. Uh, so you can say it's an insurance for unemployment. Uh, all ACASAs are closely tied to the trade unions uh, and were actually started by the trade unions, but they are separate entities. And if you need uh, full insurance in, in the labor market, you actually need to be a member of both organizations. Uh, how do you become a member of an ACASA then? Well, it, it's easy to join. There are two main requirements or conditions to be able to join an ACASA. First of all, in academic and as ACASA, you need to be an academic, which means that you need to have studied for at least three full years uh, post ground school. So uh, three years at the university uh, equaling at least 150, 150 points, which actually isn't three years, but uh, we accept people that don't uh, finish their degree uh, with one term. But apart from being an academic, you also need to have worked in Sweden sometime in, in your life. But if you fulfill both these conditions, you can join our organization. To receive compensation from us if you become unemployed, uh, based on your income, you also need to have been a member for at least one year, 12 months or more. And if you have joined us so that when you become unemployed, you don't have 12 full months of, of uh, membership, then you can also receive benefits, but they will be of a significantly lower amount uh, based on your average working hours and not on your uh, income. Uh, if you become unemployed and are a member with us, uh, there are three basic conditions to be eligible for income-based benefits. And the first is the membership condition, uh, which is that you need to have been a member for 12 months. The second requirement is that you need to have worked for at least six months in the last year, which means uh, you must have 60 hours of work for six months du during a 12 month period. You also need to have had this work inside your membership period. So if you have worked full time uh, and then join the ACASA, but then you become sick and end up being sick for the rest of your employment. So when you become unemployed, you have been a member for 12 months, but you actually haven't worked during your membership time then you don't qualify for income related benefits as well. So as a member, six months with at least 60 hours of work per calendar month. And the third condition is that you need to be registered at the employment office, uh, Arbetsförmedlingen. And you have to be able to look for and take work inside Sweden, which means that you need to have a, a work permission to be able to register at Arbetsförmedlingen. How much benefits do I get then? Uh, well, first, we, the ACASA, we will calculate an average working hours as well as an average monthly salary. Uh, and this is always done as a means value over a 12 month period. Normally the, the last 12 months before you became unemployed. So if you have had a, a salary of 30,000 crowns each month and you actually have worked for the last year with that salary, you haven't been sick, you haven't been on parental leave or anything, then it's the last 12 months and it's your full salary that will be uh, the base for the unemployment benefits. However, if you only have worked for uh, say six months and before that you were on stipends and before that you didn't even live in Sweden, uh, then we only have six months of work, but uh, we always make the calculation over a 12 month period. So if you, in that case, have had six 
months of uh, full-time work with 30,000 crowns a month, then the average will be half time and 15,000 crowns a month. So the first thing we do is we calculate average amount of working hours and, and salary. And when we have done that calculation, what you will receive uh, is 80% of that calculation with a maximum amount of 26,400 a month as benefits, which means that if your average salary has been more than 33,000 crowns a month, then you also need to have this additional income insurance provided by SULF uh, to actually receive 80% of your actual salary. You can only get compensation when you are registered uh, at Arbetsförmedlingen and you cannot register retroactively, which means that on the first day of unemployment, uh, in order to not miss any benefits that you might be entitled to, you need to register at Arbetsförmedlingen at once. To be considered unemployed, which also uh, is necessary to receive benefits, you must meet the following conditions. You need to be registered at the unemployment at the employment office. You need to look for, for work actively. You need to be willing to work at least 17 hours a week. You need to be prepared to take all kinds of positions. And you need to live in Sweden. And there are some exceptions to the, the, the last rule, but the main rule is that the Swedish unemployment insurance is for people taking part of the Swedish labor market. And the main rule is that you need to be placed in Sweden to take part of, of this social security. Uh, the be prepared to take all kinds of positions uh, is actually something most people joining us don't really know about. It's not an insurance giving you the right to say no to work that you don't think fit your educational background. Uh, you are actually provided to take any job offered to you to be able to receive the benefits. As a PhD, <clears throat> a very common question for us is the question if you can receive benefits while you finish your thesis when your employment as a PhD has ended? And the answer to that is no. You need to have finished your thesis to be able to receive benefits. Uh, if you are applying for unemployment benefits after completing, sorry, after completing a PhD, the same rules applies as for those who have been studying towards, for instance, a bachelor's degree. And this means that you must either have definitely completed or definitely withdrawn from your PhD studies in order to be entitled unemployment benefits. Uh, so when are you then considered unemployed? Well, uh, you are no, it's as soon as you no longer are employed and or studying. So when your studies are completed or when you have definitely withdrawn from your studies. Uh, in the case of PhD studies, we actually consider the studies completed when the thesis is submitted for printing. Uh, so from this date, you can apply for unemployment benefits. What about the study break? Uh, well, I'm sorry to say that's not possible either. You need to withdraw from your research studies if you have no possibility of finish them, finishing them. And the withdrawal must be definite. You, you can't have a place as a PhD left. What if only the public defense of the thesis is left? Well, uh, you could be entitled to benefits even if the public defense is left to be done. Uh, and that, as I said uh, earlier, uh, we can say as soon as the thesis is submitted for printing, we, we think it's finished. But it could also be the case if there are only minor editorial changes remains, uh, if you can get uh, your handledare, supervisor, to actually tell us this, 
then you can receive benefits from the date they say that the only thing left now are minor editorial changes. It has nothing to do with, with the actual, actual thesis. Then you actually can receive benefits earlier than the printing date. And there also might be, uh, I've had uh, cases where people for some reason have their public defense uh, set in a very long time in the future, like they're finished with the thesis, but the public defense will be like six months onward and they won't do the printing until one month before the public defense. And in that case, you can of course receive uh, benefits from the day your supervisor tells us, well, it's finished, it's only waiting to be uh, sent to print. So uh, that's all I had to tell right now. And I am happy to answer any questions you might have. So thank you, Petter. And um, there is one uh, hand raised, I think. And uh, there is one question from the chat about um, if someone with permanent, uh, uh, red, uh, permanent uh, I think permanent permit register at Arsmeli. I think if that address is about permanent residence permit, yes, of course you can uh, register at Arsmeli, and, and then you are free to take any type of work. And I can say that we quite often get questions about work permit, and and for uh, citizens outside European Union, you are allowed to work after your PhD if you have applied for for permanent residency or an extension of your residence permit um, and so on. So, so that not, should not be a, a problem. So uh, now I think there are more questions, but there are some hands uh, as well. And uh, let me see. Uh, we also got a question from Facebook. Uh, yeah. How does parental leave affect eligibility? Eligible, I'm a I can't say it. How does parental leave affect eligibility for ACASA? If my employment ends September 30th, 2021, I am supported by scholarships for three months while finishing up my thesis and then go on full time parental leave for eight months until the end of August 22. Will I be eligible for full ACASA? And should yes. I register at Arbetsförmedlingen as soon as I've sent my thesis to the printers or when my parental leave ends? Uh, actually, in that case, you can wait until the parental leave ends uh, in the case that the parental leave is full-time parental leave. Uh, uh, as I said, the, the unemployment benefits are calculated as a means value over 12 months. And... Uh, Normally, it's the last 12 months before you register and, and apply for benefits. But there are uh, things that make, can make us look at months further back. And among those things are full-time studies, which means that in the case your employment ends, but, uh, and it takes one, half a year before you, you're finished with your thesis, in the case you still have been registered for full-time studies as a full-time PhD during that period, even though your employment has ended, we can skip those months and actually make the calculation on only the time when you were employed. Uh, the same applies for parental leave. If you are on a parental leave, we skip those months and we look at the 12 months before the parental leave. And in, if I understood your case correctly, you have an employment and then you have the stipends for three months. And in the case that the stipends are for full-time PhD studying, then those months are skippable as well. So after your eight months of parental leave, you will register because that's your actual first day as unemployed. Before that, you have been on a parental leave uh, for full-time, or been studying and working with your thesis full time. So after your parental leave, we look at the last 12 months and then we can see that eight of those months you've been on full time parental leave Then we skip those months. What happened before that? Well, there were three months with a stipend 
And in, in the case those were for full-time PhD studies, we can skip those months as, as well and then look at the 12 months before that when we make our calculations. So as long as you have been a member for 12 full months by the, by the end of your parental leave and have been a member for at least six months where you were employed for at least 60 hours a week, you will receive full benefits. Yeah, uh, there are some more questions and some uh, raised hands. So uh, maybe we can take the hands first and we try to answer in the chat uh, as well. Uh, so I think it's Alexander Ekman first. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so I joined a year ago when the government told everyone to join. Um, is there a good reason to join earlier than 12 month, months before I graduate? Because I don't plan on quitting and getting fired as a PhD is, as I understand, very rare. Solidarity, of course. <laughs> well, uh, if you look at it from, from your own point of view, uh, there are no exceeding benefits of being a member for a longer time than the 12 months uh, uh, than your last 12 months as employed or the last 12 months before you need to seek benefits as long as there are at least six months of, of at least 60 hours a week of, of wages. Uh, so no, uh, in that case you have no uh, additional, apart from the solidarity aspect, uh, you don't need to have been a member earlier it, it doesn't alter your decision or your rights to benefits. What, what, what actually could be the problem is that if you plan on joining at a later date, there might, even though the employment doesn't end, there could be other things happening to you. You might be sick. There might happen something that makes you not being able to fulfill your PhD studies. Uh, you, you can get a disease altering your possibility to take all kinds of work or do all kinds of things in the labor market. But if you still have some possibility to work in, in another field, then you might not, then, then you might have, uh, actually, it might have been good for you to join earlier because in that case, up until the date you became ill, all that work make you eligible for unemployment benefits even though you can continue with your phd okay yeah. thank you uh, yes then, then we have uh, emil rufos yes thanks um i'm wondering if you have a gap after the defense and a postdoc that you already know that you will get but let's say you have four months of unemployment between those positions. Do you qualify for that part? Yeah, I would say as a main rule, you would qualify. Uh, what we look at is that you need to have finished your, uh, your PhD. It's, it needs to be either finished or, or withdrawn. But in, in the case that you are finished with your PhD and then four months later, you will receive a, a postdoc you can actually have benefits in between, but you need to apply for work actively during that period of time. And you can't from day one say, okay, but I, I won't take this job because I have this uh, postdoc coming up. That's, you need to, during all that period of time, do everything to find work in between bridging the gap, so to say. Okay, uh, but it, it's possible. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, before the next speaker, uh, there are some questions in the chat th about uh, what it means to take any type of job and what happens if you refuse. Maybe you can say a few words about that better. Yes, uh, well, it, it's the insurance is made for you to seize your unemployment as soon as possible. And of course, that means that you should take any job offered to you. I would say it's not a problem as long as you actually find work 
in your field and you apply for work that are in your field, it's not a problem if you can do that actively. But if you can't find any work at all that you think match your educational background, then you have a problem because you can not you cannot not seek employment and have the benefits. And if you don't do that, what will happen is that uh, either you will receive a warning the first time we get the information that you're actually not actively seeking work. Uh, first time you get a warning, second time uh, you lose one day of benefits, the third time you lose five day, days of benefits, fourth time you lose 10 days of benefits, and if it happens the fifth time, uh, your right to unemployment benefits uh, is withdrawn. Uh, you can't have benefits anymore. Uh, now we have Jun Li. I'm sorry for the pronun pronunciation if it's wrong, but welcome. Yes, thank you. Uh, I have a very short question because in my case, um, uh, because I, I know this um, information a bit late, I finished my PhD defense in the end of March this year, but yes. I became the member from the 1st of March this year. So um, now I joined the uh, project from the public labor, something they help me to search the jobs and blah, blah, blah. So first, uh, is there any contradiction between these two activities? And the second is, uh, uh, if, for example, in the worst case, if I did not find a job after one year, but I keep paying the um, membership for this, can I still get benefit in one year later or something? Okay. No, I, I would say if you haven't found any work, then uh, you can't receive benefit, unemployment benefits. Because as I said earlier, for us to pay out benefits, you need to have worked for at least six months, at least 60 hours uh, a month during your membership time. So if you joined March this year. Yes then you have been a member for 12 full months in March next year. And for us to be able to pay out uh, unemployment benefits that are income, uh, income related by that time, you need to during that year have had at least six months with 60 hours uh, a month of, of uh, work. Okay. So you need to find half time work for half a year to, mm. to be able to receive benefits. And in that case, you won't receive full benefits. To receive full benefits, you need to have worked for the full year mm. as well. Yeah. So if but I understand- There's no contradiction between being a member of uh, your ACASA and participating in uh, labor market uh, uh, through Arbetsförmedlingen. Often they are, uh, connected. So if you would have had the rights to unemployment benefits and Arbetsförmedlingen still would have asked you to participate in this program, then you would have received equal to unemployment benefits, but from Försäkringskassan. Uh, so we our, our yeah, we have lo lots of contact, uh, Arbetsförmedlingen and uh, all the different uh, unemployment benefit insurance organizations. All the castles. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, Peter, we got also a question if you can travel abroad when you have benefits. And I, and I think we can say that basically you cannot. Uh, and then there might be a few exceptions, but you need to contact Arkasa first in that case to exactly. get that approved. Uh, so you have to stay within Sweden. Otherwise, you have to check the box that you are not unemployed that day or those days. That yes. you... There are. There are two different exceptions, uh, uh, but both of them requires that you contact uh, uh, your ACASA first uh, and yeah. tell them your case. But there are actually, the only way to do it is to, if you're actively seeking work in, in another country, and uh, the main rule is that it's inside the European Union, so you can't go anywhere. Uh, and, uh, and, if it's inside the European Union, it, you can actually do it for quite a long time, but it needs to be approved first. Uh, 
And then there are the exceptional rule of very short journeys for like an interview or something like that. You can actually go to Berlin for a Thursday, but, but right now that's not a question because of the lockdown as well, I think. But we had some cases before where you can go away for a weekend or uh, travel out Tuesday and return to Sweden Thursday. Yeah. And in, in the case, you actually could prove that, well, I had one or two interviews these days, then it's okay as well. But you always check with your Akasa yes. first. And you cannot go just for vacation or so abroad. Oh. That's not, not, not okay. So uh, then there was a question perhaps for us to insert more that if, if you, uh, your funding runs out and you want to continue your studies, uh, that's perfectly possible to do um, if you can afford that. Uh, but you have to wait uh, for unemployment benefits as we have told here before. Uh, so you have to get money from elsewhere. Uh, I need to pinpoint there that in in order to not be uh, to not endanger your rights to future unemployment benefits, keep registered as a PhD full time. Because yeah. as long as you can provide information to us that even though I weren't employed this time, I were still continuing my PhD studies full time, then we can skip those studies but if if we can't prove that it's been full-time studying then you might uh, uh, be in a place where we can't skip those months and then you haven't fulfilled the work requirement yes and then there is also a question what if you take uh, uh, sfe uh, Sw swedish courses within sfe uh, when you are unemployed what what should you yeah. do then <laughs> There are possibilities to actually uh, study while on unemployment benefits, but uh, and SFE might be uh, something that qualifies, but it's regulated uh, in a way that you can only study at a maximum of half time, like 50% studying. Uh, so if you find a SFE course, you can of course take it and apply for and, and, and do it parallel with being on unemployment benefits, but it can only be for a maximum of 20 weeks and it can't exceed half time. Yeah, and you should contact the Arcasa before. Exactly. To get it approved, I think, yes. So, um, and um, uh, I think then there's uh, one, uh, there are a few questions also, or one at least about uh, the connection to the Sjukpenning uh, the income, which is the basis for other social benefits, but I think that's a rather complicated issue and uh, maybe you can take, you can uh, contact us specifically with such questions because there is no direct connection here. Uh, but, um, uh, and then there is a question, how many times we can receive unemployment benefits or uh, I guess also for how long? So how long? <laughs> If you are entitled to benefits, you always receive a period of 300 days. And it's not uh, all, uh, seven days a week uh, on unemployment benefits, but it's five days a week, it's working days, which means that 300 days equals to 60 weeks of benefits if you're fully unemployed. So, uh, and after 300 days, if you by then have a child that's 18 years old or younger, or haven't yet become 18 years old, then you will automatically receive uh, 150 more days, making it a 90 week period in, in total. Yeah, thank you. And uh, then, Finally, I think we have to, uh, we are over the time, but there's one hand raised from iPhone. Uh, and so welcome to. Hello, it's me. I actually yeah. sent yeah. a question also in the yeah. chat here. I had more than a question if uh, for any reason, I mean, the, the funding might not be there anymore. So you can only continue on 75% and maybe you get 25% uh, unemployment. And I wonder what happens then. Well, as long as you continue with the PhD, you can't uh, receive any unemployment benefits for the part that you have been, uh, for the part that you are unemployed. 
And the the sad thing is that when you're when you're actually finished, we will look at your last 12 months. And if you during those months only have worked 75%, then that is the amount of work and the salary that your benefits will be based on. Okay. So Thank you. If possible, it's always best if you, through funding, problems with funding need more time with your thesis, it's always better to have parts with a lower percentage of employment earlier on in your education so you can finish with 12 months of full-time employment because it's mainly the last 12 months that are the ones that uh, statuate or uh, give the level of, of the unemployment benefits. Yes, I think uh, that's uh, all for today. We, we are five minutes over the time that was scheduled. But um, thank you everyone for joining and especially to you, Peter, for uh, uh, presenting all about uh, unemployment insurance. And as I said, do, do not hesitate to contact us or Unemployment or Academic in Asa Casa, if you have any questions about the, the insurance or, or our income insurance in SURF. And uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you for joining again. And I hope to see you again uh, 2nd of June at uh, 2, 2 p.m. when we will talk about the income insurance.